Thank you very much for tuning to my channel. Today I want to talk a few minutes about Kremlin Tide. Hypoglycemia and weight gain associated with therapy of diabetes. When this happens, we need to think about intensive therapies. Treatment of type 1 diabetes is directed at physiologic insulin replacement. Many patients with type 2 diabetes also they ultimately require insulin therapy as a result of progressive beta cell dysfunction. Starter insulin regimens such as basal insulin monotherapy for patients with type 2 diabetes commonly require repeated intensification over time to achieve even modest improvements in A1C reductions. Therefore, other therapeutic approaches should be considered. Glucose homeostasis is dependent on a complex interplay of multiple hormones that may be the targets for a multifaceted treatment approach. Insulin and amylin produced by pancreatic beta cells. Then glucagon. Glucagon is produced by pancreatic alpha cells and gastrointestinal peptides including glucagon-like peptide 1, that is GLP-1 glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide, gastric inhibitory polypeptide. So abnormal regulation of these substances may contribute to the clinical presentation of diabetes. Now amylin is a 37 amino acid peptide that is stored in pancreatic beta cells and is co-secreted with insulin. Amylin and insulin levels rise and fall in a synchronous manner. Amylin and insulin have complementary actions in regulating nutrient levels in the circulation. Amylin is deficient in type 1 diabetes and relatively deficient in insulin requiring type 2 diabetes. Amylin affects glucose control through several mechanisms including slowed gastric emptying, regulation of postprandial glucagon and reduction of food intake. Glucagon-like peptide 1, GLP-1, exhibits similar properties as amylin with the exception of insulin secretory effects. Amylin does not have insulin secretory effects, but both amylin and insulin, what they do, they ameliorate inappropriate glucagon secretion and gastric empty. GLP-1 and amylin appear to have differing magnitudes of physiologic effects and bind to different receptors in the area of post the part of the brain that may be the key for their effects. Now let me talk a few minutes about pramlinthide. Pramlinthide is a stable, soluble, non-aggregating, equipotent amylin analog that is administered by mealtime subcutaneous injection. It is available for use for both type 1 and insulin treated type 2 diabetes. Pramlinthide reproduces the actions of amylin and controls glucagon and glucose. Many questions remain unanswered regarding clinical use and long term outcomes with this class of drug and therefore the exact role of amylin analogs among the many myriad of other agents for diabetes management is unclear. But you say even when mechanism is unclear, you can still use it if it has good effects on the management of diabetes. That's why we use it. Pramlinthide regulates post meal blood glucose levels by slowing gastric emptying, promoting satiety, and also suppressing the abnormal postprandial rise of glucagon in patients with diabetes. Thus, endogenous and exogenous glucose influx are better regulated, allowing exogenous insulin therapy to easily match with the physiologic effects. Glucose dependent and uh, uh, other problems are resolved. Gramlintide does not cause hypoglycemia in the absence of therapies that otherwise cause hypoglycemia. Supraphysiologic doses of pramlinthide do not provoke hypoglycemia in normal subjects. And pramlinthide does not interfere with recovery from insulin-induced hypoglycemia. Efficacy. Pramlinthide has been studied in randomized controlled trials in both 
type 1 and type 2 diabetes. In type 1 diabetes, 30 to 60 mcg of pramelin tide administered subcutaneously with meals resulted in sustained uh, but modest, less than 1% reduction in glycated hemoglobin A1c level. So that's a good study. More than twice as many patients achieved an A1c of less than 7% in the treatment group than in the placebo group with no increase in insulin dose or incidence of uh, severe hypoglycemia. So modest reductions in body weight were seen in the treatment group compared with weight gain in patients receiving insulin only. Similar results were found in a second large randomized trial evaluating pramelin tide at 60 mcg 3 to 4 times per day. In this study, blood uh, weight loss was more prevalent in obese patients compared with normal body weight and was inadequate to control it. Pramelin tide is also under investigation for use with closed loop insulin delivery systems, which are under development for management of type 1 diabetes. In addition to modest reductions in A1C and the body weight, pramelin tide has been associated with reductions in postprandial glucose excursions and also in surrogate markers for cardiovascular and oxidative stress. So the clinical implications of these findings are still unknown. Now let me talk a few minutes about side effects. Mild to moderate nausea is the most commonly reported side effect and generally dissipates by four weeks. Nausea can be minimized by slow upward titration and is less common in patients with type 2 diabetes. Severe hypoglycemia in type 1 diabetes was increased fourfold during the first four weeks in one study when patients were started at full doses of pramelin tide at randomization without reduction in insulin dose. In a subsequent study, insulin dose was reduced by 25% at initiation of pramelin tide therapy, which was titrated to the maximum dose over a period of two to three months. So with this strategy, there was no increase in hypoglycemia. So I have one patient and this patient's hypoglycemia actually became better over time as she used this pramlin tie. And uh, she got a better result. Hypoglycemia was less frequent in studies in patients with type 2 diabetes. Now, how is this administered? Pramlin tide is only approved for use in patients with type 1 and type 2 diabetes taking prandial insulin. Pramlin tide precipitates above a pH of 5.5 and must be injected separately from insulin at a different site. So always tell that to the patient. Some patients say, oh, you're giving me two injections. Now I can use just one syringe. That's a great idea. But you need to tell them, sorry, it doesn't work that way. You need to use two different sites to give pramlin tide and insulin at two different sites in two different syringes. Make sure you remember that. The optimal timing for administration is immediately before your meal, according to the approved labeling, pre-meal insulin doses should be reduced by 50% and should subsequently be titrated upward to achieve euglycemia once the target pramlin tide dose is reduced. However, most patients require a smaller reduction in prandial insulin. Patients with near optimal glycemic control on insulin pumps who utilize the extended wave bolus feature, they require minimal prandial insulin dose after initiation of pramlin tide. Pramlin tide should not be administered to patients with severe hypoglycemia unawareness. Pramelin tide should only be administered before meal that contain at least 250 calories of carbohydrates. Patients may need to be administered their prandial insulin after meals until they become familiar with the degree of satiety and resulting reduction of carbohydrate intake that may occur. You can also substitute regular insulin for rapid acting analog. The recommended starting dose for type 1 diabetes is 15 mcg before each meal with increases of 15 mcg increments every 3 to 7 days. Then to your goal of 60 mcg before each meal. 
persistent nausea should prompt backward titration until resolved. The recommended initial dose for type 2 diabetes is 60 mcg, titrated upward to a tolerated 120 mcg with each meal. Pramlin type slows gastric emptying and may delay the rate of absorption of oral medications. Patients with gastroparesis should not use Pramlin type. Oral medications that require rapid absorption for effectiveness should be administered either one hour before or two hours after injection of pramlinthide. So let me give you a brief summary, then I will close. Pramlinthide reproduces the actions of the naturally occurring peptide hormone amylin and controls glucose without causing weight gain. You can use in type 1 and type 2 diabetes. It cannot be mixed with a syringe with insulin. Pramplin line therapy requires careful education and monitoring to avoid hypoglycemia and should be instituted in collaboration with the diabetes educator. And also, pram pramlinthide could be considered in motivated patients with type 1 diabetes suboptimally controlled with insulin therapy alone, particularly in patients taking multiple daily injections or insulin pump therapy and uh, pramlin tide may be considered for motivated patients with type 2 diabetes inadequately controlled on prandial insulin who are overweight or experience weight gain refractory to lifestyle measures. There are inadequate data to support the following uses of pramlin tide. So that's about pramlin tide. I hope this helps in your better management of diabetes. You see, control diabetes. That is something you can do because we have a plethora of medications, plethora of technology. So gain a very good control of your diabetes. If you need more help, please come and see me at my clinic. You're always welcome. We can discuss and uh, Make a plan just for you. Thank you very much.